Hey guys, today we're catching and cooking freshwater drum in South Texas in the San Antonio River. Join me. Yeah, nice one. Oh shoot. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. That was close. That was close. Did you get the barb? Good deal. Dang it. Oh. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh,
Wes is just wrapping them up. So they'll be all set for next time. I'll wrap them up, all the hooks. The interesting, the interesting tackle. The bottom here is a big giant piece of steel waist, and then they've got those big C-shaped uh, circle hooks. Circle hooks. Yeah, three on each, three to four on each. And uh, we'll just roll them back up on the PVC and take them out of here. That'll be for next time. One of the hazards here of the lines is that they catch everything. So we've got some sticks on here. It doesn't totally mess them up, but if you get them in the bait, then of course the fish can't eat them. So all we do is when we check the bait, we just pull on, hold tight. And if you feel any kind of tension, then you might have something on there. Or if the line's bouncing, or because we've set the lines out perpendicular to the shore, if they're upstream or downstream, we know something's messed with them. So in this case, it's still perpendicular, as have all the other lines. This one's over here, is perpendicular, so we're pretty sure nothing's touched it. I wouldn't have any idea what a trigger is until I got here. Um, I wouldn't say they're as bad as mosquitoes, but I mean, they're pretty annoying. Wes, Wes would disagree, but he hasn't had any experience with our Canadian mosquitoes and black flies, horse flies and deer flies. They will literally drag you off. <laughs> Whereas these ones are, you know, they kind of harass your lower leg and whatnot. Um, I can't believe you missed mosquitoes down here. Mosquitoes are they bad here? When, like earlier? At the middle of June, early part of July. And then every time the sun goes down after that, you don't go outside. Huh. It's uh Well then they weren't bad, they were never really bad here. So now I've seen lucky. some videos and I don't know that we can hit them as bad as y'all get no, them. No, I don't think so. No. They're just bigger. Our mosquitoes will literally wish you never knew what the outside was. At some times of year. So ours our big months are May, June, July. Every other month of the year is totally tolerable, but May, June, July, when the big hatches, the first warm weather, you do not want to be outside. Trade-offs to every environment. Here it's really hot, up north in Canada it's really cold. So, I mean, you don't get any insects and bugs in the middle of the winter, but you also don't get heat and... Chiggers. Chiggers. <laughs> so, you pick your poison. It's super, super, super hot out here. <laughs> in the sun too, it's almost intolerable. If you had to be out in the sun all day like this, you would not be a very happy person. Especially without clothing on. <laughs> oh no. You just lay up in the shade all day. Rot, starve to death. Just for the record, Wes just said A, and he's only been hanging out with me for what, three days now? Yeah, it's all like that. <laughs> we gotta carry these up, eh? <laughs> we sure do, eh? <laughs> Alright, so that's three lines. One more to go. Decent. What are the name of those two um, crazy Canadians, the brothers or whatever? You said, give me a minute, and you come back out the kids' brothers. Like, yeah, man, those guys <laughs> slay me, dude. Bob and Doug. Yeah, Bob and Doug. Hosiery. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. We don't say hoser. Anymore. Anymore. <laughs> Date must there goes Wes has dating himself. <laughs> we do say A. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the A thing and a, everything, yeah. but uh, you put it at the end of every question. A <laughs> <laughs> you guys say y'all. Y'all. Um Y'all want another biscuit? <laughs> All right, you gotta mind the shadows. This is like midday, there's shadows everywhere. So this is my face, these are my eyes. My mouth is moving and I'm talking, okay? So don't mind it. I'm gonna go up there on the ridge. There's all these little plants up there, they're dry tinder. This is what we need to, this gets our fire started every time here and they're everywhere. Oh, mulberries. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta get mulberries. These are too easy to grab. We're gonna do rush water drum. A side of mulberries. Wes S is over there getting a spot ready under the mulberry tree. This is only one mulberry. There's lots of mulberries. 
Don't mind the shadows, I can't fix them. Oh, barbed wire. Everything's got thorns on it, including the barbed wire. <laughs> it's funny, right? All right, let's fix the shadow. Let's try to fix it. Can I fix it? Can you see me yet? Can you see me yet? No, harsh shadows everywhere. Get used to it, guys. That's part of high noon in Texas. Okay, so we got our branches here. Um, Wes is picking out a spot down here. What was I gonna say? Oh yeah, everything's so dry here. Even like the soil's dry. You walk down the bank, you slide down the bank. It's like, it's like a slip and slide, but with sand. So you gotta watch these banks. The banks threw me for a loop. I fell down the banks like two or three times, just fall right on my butt. Um, so Wes has got some wood he's collecting right now. And I've got some kindling here. I'm gonna start a little pile over here under the shade of the mulberry. Let's see if we can fix the shadows. Can we fix the shadows? No, I'm still just a shadow man. Cause, oh, 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 oh it, it, uh, still, I'm still a shadowy man. Right, oh, there I am, there's my face. Okay, so we're gonna start a fire over here. Wes is collecting wood behind me. He's got a technique he's gonna show me of how to cook spit roast. We're gonna call it like a spit roast? It's kind of like a spit roast, yeah. Kind of like a spit roast fish. We're gonna scale it. We're gonna try to scale it with my bone knife, which has replaced my Groman. But not by choice, because I lost my Groman somewhere here in the wilderness. It's inherited my Groman. Groman, you gotta send me another trout and bird, and I'll keep promoting your knives. So uh, Bob Hanser actually put that in the grinder for me real quick. He's got the tools just pretty sharp. You hear that? I think that's gonna work. So Wes is busting up his tinder, or my tinder, or our tinder, because we're gonna share this fish. There's a lot to go around. Man, the shadows here. Okay, so he's got some hackberry going. Uh, I think, yeah, hackberry, dead. We don't know yeah, what it hackberry, is. It's hackberry, I think it's hackberry. Pine. After we get the blazer running, we'll run and grab a couple of pieces of mesquite. Mesquite, yes, mesquite's a big one here. As soon as it gets lit. Ow. Yeah, it's hot. Fire burns you. It doesn't take much to get these going. They're dry, dry, dry. And apparently there's no big risk of, you know, grass fires and stuff. But we did a little, we get a little bit on our raccoon pit roast. So, if you're wondering why we picked this location, part of it's the shade. Other part of it is like, this thing's loaded with berries. Uh, can't reach any though. I have to shake it maybe and catch them. But there are lots of trees around. There's, they're all over the ground here. It's really cool. All right, so we're gonna get this fire going and then we're gonna scale drum. Oh, it's so nice to heat myself by the fire. <laughs> it's so cold out oh, here. It's so cold. Oh, that just, that just, just reminds me of home now. <laughs> I'm taking Wes's lead on this last uh, last one. He collected all the branches to make a spit roast for the alligator gar I caught. And uh, when he, by the time he came back, I had made a barbecue. <laughs> so he wasn't too impressed. <laughs> you stole my stick. Yeah, I did. I took his sticks. He came back and uh, I was just hungry. I wanted to put it on and cook it. So I took his sticks and uh, turned them into something that he had not, not intended to. So kind of dashed his dreams about doing a spit roast alligator gar. So we're making up for this time. He is going to do a spit roast, spit roast drum. It's going to be delicious. Yeah, and we're gonna experience all that Texas has to offer as far as all the fish species. We are still missing a uh, uh, bottlenose. Bottle nose. Not bottlenose, we got long nose. Long nose gar, which we just can't hook. I just can't hook it. So it's not looking like that's gonna happen, but uh, you never know. Could be one this evening, could be one anytime. Or could there be, I might have to come back and get one. So you got your spit roast? I am really close. All right. It's nice to share techniques that's you, what it's all about. Did you think my idea was dumb? Like you thought it was okay after I did it. Like, yeah, the, it, the what you did was okay. And uh, it actually, the gar came out real good. But uh, 
it just it wasn't what I was you know I had started on. what you had planned what I had planned right but no complaint so I there's mean, now there's different ways there's multiple ways to skin a cat multiple ways to skin a cat there's you can unpack your MRE however you want <laughs> as long as it gets cooked and you don't die <laughs> there you go Wes asked look him up on YouTube I think I've inspired him to do more of like catching and cooking style stuff so the best way I find to inspire you guys to go out and do this is to show how much fun it can be. Yeah, it's a lot of work and yeah, it's some frustration, but uh, the rewards I find are definitely worth, worth the effort. So when you get a, a fresh caught fish like this and you cook it over fire, I think that's payback for all the effort that you had to put into to doing it. And it's nice to be able to provide for yourself. It really is. And just side note, that uh, fish you get in the store, that the fresh fish aisle, that's not fresh. No. This if, is fresh. If it smells like fish, it's not fresh fish. Exactly. If it smells like nothing, you have fresh fish. So try to find that in the supermarket, good luck. What you're getting is week old, two weeks old, put on ice, it's not fresh. No. And it, it doesn't taste fresh either. So, since there's a ton of dirt here, we are going to use some leaves to protect. You know, you don't want sand in your fish? No, not particularly. Because if you do... Just... No, that's fine. <laughs> okay, okay. We, we can do without the sand. All right, so these are just mulberry leaves. It's not hurting the tree, relax. Okay, so let's do the pretty side up. Now, I don't know if this this thing's gonna work. I bet it does. This is my wood, wooden... Bone. Wood bone. 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 It's long. It's hot. It's hot. It's How can you always get bone and wood confused? <laughs> what are we talking? Are we talking about not wood? Not usually. Not usually. But but we're we're not talking about wood right now. We're talking about a bone and scaling a fish with the bone. It's a, it's a real bone. It's a real bone. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Good. <laughs> Just so we're clear. Hey, yo! Told you it work. It's working. So if you never scaled a fish before. All you do is start from the back and work to the front. You kind of close your mouth and go because they're going to try to shoot all over the place. This is not something you want to do at home. If you do, um, kitchen sink it, but it's still going to get out. Have you ever done that at home? Yeah, I did it in the kitchen sink once. Yeah, that was the last time? Yeah, I got a new wife out of the deal. I'm really looking forward to this. Wes has been saying really good things about it. Saying it's a real fatty fish and how we don't need to add any spices to it. So I'm looking forward to just trying a fish without any without anything on it. So try it nude, so to speak. So yeah, there's a it's a thing to actually cook stuff on the fire and get that smoky flavor to it. It does add a lot of flavor by itself. And I mean, I used to be a guy who'd, I'd uh, cook everything at home sort of thing. Until I started doing this, never really appreciate how good things could taste without a lot of extras. Just the smoke from the fire adds a whole lot of flavor. So under here, he's just cut the flap of skin and he's kept this here. Normally you'd come all the way back, I suppose. But what he's done is gone in here, up through cavity which is not an issue at all and then out through the mouth and this thing is not going anywhere it's solid as a rock like it's not gonna fall off and you could easily spit that turn it it's gonna be a slow cook kind of deal but uh, it's gonna be it's gonna do a good job and this is the hard very complicated part you poke this in the ground so it's gonna stay steady boom boom and you go about your business You've got the, the meat part down. Right. And we're not going to throw a pile of flame on there? No, if you cook it too fast, you'll actually burn the skin. And it'll actually, 
lose the fat into the fire. Cooking it like this, you're trying to hold on to the most calories you can out of that meal. In theory, it took two grown men <laughs> three days to catch breakfast. And that's not a lie or exaggeration. So, uh, that's, those set lines have been there for three days, and this is pretty much what we've managed to get from it. Yeah, so I mean, you don't waste any of it. You don't fillet it unless you're like in a motel somewhere. Fan fancy smancy, you got fancy smancy. You, you got oil and uh, and something to uh, bread it with. Yeah. Then you might fillet it, but then not. You might fillet it. But yeah. like this out here, and what we've done, cooking it like this, it keep the fire low. We can go back to fishing now. We can go try to get more food while the fire and the three sticks do the work for us. I like it. Well, I good. I'm impressed. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I'm good. You want me to come cook for you? I'm yeah. cheap. Like, Any, anytime. Like a hundred dollars an hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you guys think that's a hundred dollar an hour cooking. Leave a comment down below. Let Wes know if he's doing a good job. And uh, go check out his channel. I gotta see some good things coming. I'm giving him a little bit of a rundown tutorial on how I film. And so hopefully that's gonna rub off on him. I think it will. He's laughing. Small onion's got something to say about that. <laughs> that boy needs some education. <laughs> uh, having fun here in Texas. I'm having fun here in Texas, but tomorrow I'm going home. Tomorrow I'm going back to see my family. I've been here for two weeks. That's a long time. That's the longest time I can remember being away from my family in recent memory. So, yeah, it's been a while. It's been fun. It's been a great adventure. I've learned a lot. I've got to experience a different culture um, and a different environment. And I've learned a lot of new techniques. So, I have been... Uh, very well rewarded for the sacrifices I have made to come here and do this. And, uh, you know, the only thing I could add on top of this that would have made it so much better is if my family was here too, because um, that's one of the things I miss the most. So, me. Hey. But I am glad I came. So there's that. And I, I am glad I got an invite from Bob Hansler, and you should check out his YouTube channel. Because without him, I would not have access to all these resources. Oh, it's raining. Okay, um, the uh, thing with cooking fish like this is that the heat is actually going to build up through that muscle. And it'll start cooking the oils and stuff out from around the bones and the spine and the brain. It'll actually, and you can see it starting to drip. Yeah, it's true. But when the brain is hot, the eyes will glass over. They'll actually turn white from the juices cooking in the eye, and your fish is done. Okay. We're not quite there. No, they, actually, now we've got a little bit too much heat, probably, but we had lost a lot of our. Yeah, we lost a lot of the deal. Yeah, so and now that's we're you know get back up. You're doing exactly right. Just move the fire back just a little bit and try to keep it away from the fish directly, and try to just em embrace it with heat, I guess. Yeah, just that's <laughs> without. You just want to give it some gentle <laughs> love. You don't really want to burn it. You don't want the burning, burning hunk of love. You want a gentle, warm embrace of whatever. I you want to cook it slow. Slow, yeah. Slow. Yeah, we didn't quite have a good enough bed of coals, maybe. Yeah. Big coals down, drop down, and then. I believe somebody said he was going to go get some mesquite and throw on top of there. Uh, yeah, that was me. <laughs> uh, I didn't. <laughs> all good. It's going to turn <laughs> like, out all right. It'll be fine. And we're probably 30 minutes out from eating it, though. So there's something here called, I call them jiggers, but they're actually chiggers. What's this he ate? <laughs> Wes is going to show you his chiggers, which is, uh, okay, so it's a microscopic animal. Near microscopic. It's a little bitty tiny mite. You can see them if they walk across like something black or whatever. They're kind of reddish. And they're everywhere in the grass and... Grass, pretty much. They like, they have colonies. And if you walk through the colony, unless you're from Canada, evidently, you're... <laughs> no, uh, we don't have them. You're screwed. Well, I think I'm immune to them because maybe the bacteria in them is very similar to like a black fly mosquito. <laughs> i got to zoom in and show you his feet. And then I'm going to show you my feet. So anyway, they're, they're a little microscopic animal, crawls up your skin, uh, can get through your sock apparently, and then what, they bite? They, they're a little microscopic critter, almost microscopic. They crawl up 
and they actually lay an egg on your skin. That egg proceeds to bore into your skin and rapidly becomes a chigger. Then when it leaves, it leaves behind all the stuff it took to make it a chigger and you wind up with this. When you get to this stage, there's nothing you can do about the chigger because the chigger's already gone. You're just left with these itchy, infected, drive you insane sores. And I want to scratch so bad right now. So basically the baby egg yeah. is consuming your flesh inside of what, like a couple hours? Just, it, it takes them like eight hours. And the whole time they're in your skin, you don't feel them. Like I got this one last night, it didn't bother me. See, oh, I didn't So they it. bite into your skin, they lay an egg, and then they, they, the adult bums off. Bums off. And then the egg hatches, comes out, drops off. And yeah, and the, the baby chigger that hatched out in your skin, he doesn't give you any grief. He just crawls off. He does something else in the grass and then becomes an adult chigger and does it to somebody else. So the infection is, is it basically the itchiness is the infection. The infi uh, yeah, and open, like if open you're, sore. Yeah. If you're me and you're allergic to them, it's hell. Yeah. You, he, Wes is definitely allergic to them. And I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you mine after because mine are not bad. I, in fact, I, if I hadn't noticed they were there, I'd just be like, well, whatever. I got some marks here. I've been pulling my socks all the way up and the, the tight band, Wes is saying it's probably helping me. But uh, you can see like they're, they're down here on my actual foot too, so, um, but they're not nearly as bad as Wes, like that's not even pussing up or, or anything and they're all the way up here, but I, my other foot's about the same. They do feel like a lump, to be honest, I do, I do feel like they're being a little bit itchy, but I probably wouldn't notice them if I didn't take my sock off and pay attention to them. So, hey, yeah, there you go. The alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Just put it in your hand and rub it. It helps with your out. You don't get the infection, and it'll give you an hour of relief from the insanity. And then what about uh, you're talking about using like insect repellent? Yeah, like it, spray. I am an idiot. I brought insect spray. If I had sprayed my boots and the bottom of my legs before I went out into this, I would not be suffering now. This is easy. Anybody can do this. It's just a fish on a stick. Literally, it's kind of like food popsicle. Food popsicle. All right, so plunk it down. That's it. Undiscure it. And we are ready to eat. Let's make sure we don't need this anymore. Uh, what's the uh, protocol, etiquette? I the, just, I, pick, I picked the fins out. That's are you going to eat fins? I'm not going to eat the fins. I guess those could be our chips for our fish. Yeah, we could. They're pretty much just in the way. Oh, Ooh, you got a piece of skin. You got the bacon. First, I'm going to eat this. You got the bacon part. <laughs> I got the bacon. <laughs> I'm going to get a piece of bacon, too. That looks good. It looks uh, it looks like a fatty piece of bacon, actually. Yeah, it, man. it does look fatty. It is real fatty. It's really oily. All right. That's good. That's good. Um, what does it taste like? Drum. Yeah, I never had drum before. <laughs> oh, well, that's true. Uh, whiting. Yeah? Doesn't it? It's just like whiting fish. Whiting? The whiting. The, it's a North Atlantic fish. Oh, I don't know that one. I'm going to have a piece of just the fat. Roll well, that's out. The, I mean, we scaled it, so this, which anybody else would throw away. My mouth is watering thinking about this. Yeah, the one bone in there. But yeah, you got to watch. There's rib bones in there. But what? Of course. It's simple, right? Yep, a stick. Well, three sticks, really. One skewer, two sticks coming out of the dirt, out of the tripod. Hang it over, get a better clothes, and be patient. And so guys, go check out Wes, S, look him up, Wes, W-E-S, space S. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel. It's not a very big YouTube channel, but we're doing some collaborations because Wes wants to get to a thousand subscribers so that you can actually make a few dollars a month. A few dollars a month, yeah. Because. <laughs> This gets to this, this hobby digs into your pocketbook pretty fast. <laughs> yeah, especially when you have incidental expenses like I have. Right. I've already dropped a camera in the water. So, yeah, cost money. <laughs> Y'all go to my channel and watch me drop my last two hundred dollar phone the day after I bought it because I tried to step on a rattlesnake. <laughs> uh, there's try, some try adult to... language. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wes is not going to sugarcoat it on his channel. He's got prepping, prepper, 
material. Um, if you're gonna have some fishing, you're gonna have some homesteading. Uh, enjoy the channel, you can subscribe or not. I don't care. And uh, definitely consider giving Wes a sub. He's selling shirts, uh, read off the shirt. What does it say? It's uh, D-R-U-M. It's the deadly rainbow unicorn militia. It's just a joke, calm down people. It's the Texas division. And it says we're melting snowflakes to water the grass of freedom and Wes S loves you. That's what it says. And you can find them on your uh, uh, YouTube there's channel? A, yeah, there'll be a link in almost every one of my videos to uh, to where you can get them. Okay, but and, tell me the story behind the shirt. Okay. Real, real, real quick. You, real, real quick. Your son. My son got a brain tumor and it knocked him out of working. His wife, his brand new wife, has a t-shirt job. They weren't doing much with it, but because they need money this i don't make out anything off this he does so if you buy this shirt you're helping my son defeat cancer and this is west ass i love you i'd appreciate it a lot he's a good kid they're cool shirts uh and it's not like we're actually going out and being all militant and stuff we're just making fun of people who cry about doing manly stuff we are representing the fact that you could go out and do non-snowflake stuff and still be a decent human being. It's just that simple. And uh, it's uh, it goes to a good cause, like I say. I mean, I know he's not going to get rich or anything off of it, but he's got three children. Well, two and one on the way. So he can't, like, not buy groceries, you know what I mean? So, anyway, any help would be appreciated. Now come over to my channel, check it out. He's on there sometimes. How do they find you? Uh, Wes S. It's capital W, E S, space, capital S, period. And there's a few of them out there. Uh, look for the guy with the really big bushy beard. And uh, it's uh, the acronym is We Each Seek Survival. And you should be able to spot me pretty quick. And I'll probably, come, hopefully, if I'm lucky, uh, you should be able to type in really handsome camper survival type dude and that'll be me anyway love y'all peace out